The movie begins as we see a woman, riding in a boat through the ocean on a stormy night, with her baby boy resting on her back, while a giant wave was heading towards her. Suddenly the woman started to play her instrument, and as soon as she strings her guitar, the water suddenly divided into two, giving way for the woman to pass. After getting to the dry lands, the woman quickly goes to her crying baby, who only has one eye, which shows that someone was trying to harm the baby. Few years later, the little boy is all grown up, and was given a name called, Kubo. Last few years after his father passed away, Kubo's mother has been really sick. As she is still mourning his father's death till now, Kubo takes care of his mother, and watches over her, day and night. Kubo's eye was removed by his evil grandfather when he was a baby. During daytime Kubo takes his mom's guitar and goes to the nearby village to explore. Anytime the villager sees Kubo, they are always so excited because Kubo is not only good at playing instruments, he is also extraordinary at telling stories. With the help of his mother's guitar, he turns his origami figures to life, and uses it to narrate the story. Kubo tells the villagers a story about a warrior, called Hanzo, who was very heroic, and fought with so many enemies. Hanzo has three powerful elements, which was his almighty armor, his sword, and his helmet, which gave him unlimited powers to fight his enemies. Now Hanzo is about to challenge the powerful demon called, the Moon King. Suddenly, Kubo senses Don his approaching, and couldn't finish the story. The villagers are disappointed, and really wanted him to complete the story, as his storytelling skills were too good. But he hurries home, promising to finish the story the next day. Kubo returns home, and his mother continues the story he was telling the villagers. She reveals to him that the warrior with the magical armor was his father, Hanzo. Unfortunately, Kubo's father was killed by her own father, the Moon King together with her evil sisters. The Moon King managed to take one of Kubo's eye, but fortunately, his mother successfully escapes with him, before his other eye was plugged out. She begs Kubo to always keep his promise of returning home before dawn, to avoid the Moon King, and the evil sisters. She also gives him a monkey toy, and made him promise to always carry it, wherever he goes. The next day, Kubo returns back to the village. An old lady tells Kubo about a great festival, about to take place in their village which gives them the chance to honor their loved ones. Later that evening, we see all the villagers at the graveyard, communicating with their loved ones. Kuo also joins them, and tries to communicate with his father, and also expresses how he misses him. Sadly, Kubo didn't get any response, making him to furiously destroy the lanterns around the grave, and this totally made him to forget about returning home before sunset. Moments later, a cloud of darkness forms around the area. The evil sister suddenly appears from nowhere, and tries to capture Kubo. Quickly, Kubo hurries into the village, to warn the villagers about them. By then, the evil sisters had already started to attack the village. The evil sisters catches Kubo, and was about to kill him. Suddenly, his mother appears from nowhere, and strings her guitar, which stops the evil sisters' attacks. Immediately, she pleaded with Kubo to find his father lost magical amour, so he can protect himself from harm. She uses her magic to give him wings, that helps him escape, although Kubo was hesitant in leaving his mom alone. Suddenly, she fights with the evil sisters, and disappears in a powerful blast of energy. Ku wakes up, only to find his monkey toy is now turned alive. The monkey informs him on how his village was destroyed, and burnt to the ground. Kubo is so shocked, on how a monkey was able to communicate with him. The monkey carries Kubo on her back, and takes him inside a whale carcass, which is where she stays. The monkey tells Kubo that his mother uses her final magic to save him, by bringing her as a toy monkey back to life. His mother assigned the monkey to guide him, and to assist him in finding his father's magical armor, so he can face the Moon King, and the evil sisters. The next day, Kubo and Monkey started their journey, in search for his father's magical amour. During the journey Kubo is taken away into a cave by a mysterious creature. The monkey hurries to save him, thinking Kubo is in danger. But Kubo clams her down, explaining that the creature wasn't trying to harm him, the creature is in a form of a giant beetle, who was a warrior and has a little memory of his past. The beetle only remembers that he was student under Hanzo, but was later cursed with the form of a beetle. But when he discovers that Kubo is the son of Hanzo, he decided to join Kubo and Monkey on their journey, in searching for his lost father's armor. The first element that was meant to be found, is his father's sword. They are guided by one of Kubo's origami figures, who was representing Hanzo. The group reaches another cave, that is shaped like a skull. Inside, and see a sword stuck inside a floating skeletal hand. As Kubo tries to bring out the sword, 
this brings a gigantic skeleton monster back to life. The monkey tries to use the sword to attack the monster, but it shatters into pieces. Which shows that it wasn't his father's sword they were looking for. The group discovers that the monster has a lot of swords sticking in its skull. Suddenly they started to try the swords on the monster, to know which sword is the real one. But every sword they used, shattered into pieces. Finally, Kubo pulls out the right sword, and as he uses it on the monster, it killed it instantly. When it was time for them to continue their journey, Kubo gathers leaves together, and with his high sense of creativity, he makes a boat using the leaves. The group then enters the boat, to find Kubo's next father's element. During their journey, the beetle teaches Kubo archery, and they use the skill to catch fish with a rope attached to the bow. While Monkey uses the sword to slice the fish into several pieces, so they can eat for lunch. The Kubo origami figures, shows Kubo the location of his father's second element, which is guarded by a creature with numerous eyes. Kubo and Beetle swims into the surface of the water, to find the second element which is a armor. After a long search, Kubo finds the Amor. And when he wears it, the gigantic creature with many eyes appears in front of him. As the creature was about to devour him, Beetle comes to his rescue, by piercing the gigantic creature in its eye, and goes down the surface of the water, to rescue Kubo. On the other hand, one of the evil sisters sees Kubo's boat, and goes to attack. The monkey stops her, by engaging in a fight with her. The sister calls Kubo's mother a traitor, for falling in love with Hanzo, and really wants to kill Kubo to satisfy her hatred. After a long fight, the monkey manages to defeat the sister, with another powerful magic blast. Beetle appears on the surface of the water with Kubo, who is already unconscious. Monkey carries Kubo on her arms and begins to cry, telling him to wake up. Kubo suddenly wakes up from unconsciousness, and discovers that monkey that has been with him all these while, is no other person than his mother, in a new form. The group finds a shelter to sleep for the night. Kubo's mother tells him a story about how her father sent her on a mission to kill Hanzo, together with her evil sisters. But instead of killing him, she falls in love with him. This made her father really outranged, because of her betrayer. Immediately, her father suddenly gathered armies to go after them, and Hanzo died in the process giving her the chance to escape with baby Kubo in her arms. After she ended the story, Kubo falls asleep. Beetle notices that Kubo's mother is injured from the battle with her sister. She sadly tells the Beetle, that she doesn't have much time, and unfortunately, the little magic that is keeping her alive is fading away. Kubo later had a dream that night, and when he saw the Moon King, who was apparently blind. He gives Kubo the location, on where he can find his last father's missing element, which is the helmet. The next morning, the group continues their journey, so they can find the last element. After a long walk, they finally found where the helmet is kept. But unfortunately, the other evil sister appears to try and stop them. The evil sister reveals the beetle true identity to be Kubo's father, Hanzo. But Hanzo didn't remember before, because he lost his memories. As the evil sister is about to kill Kubo, his mom comes in the way to fight her. But she's no match, due to the injury she sustained from her last fight, this time, the tiny magic holding her off, has all faded away. She says her final goodbye to Kubo, and Hanzo promised her to keep Kubo safe. But unfortunately, the evil sister kills Hanzo by piercing him with a sword, and also uses her sword, to kill Kubo's mother in a fatal blow. Outranged, Kubo grabs the guitar and as he strings it, a powerful energy comes out from it, which killed the evil sister instantly. Kubo goes to the village, and sees the entire villagers really afraid, because the Moon King has arrived. Immediately, Kubo who is now with his father complete Amor equips himself with it, and goes to face the Moon King. During their conversation, we found out that the Moon King had only deceived Kubo in his dream, luring him to a trap that killed his parents. The Moon King offered Kubo a chance to join him in the heavens, and to abandon humanity. But Kubo rejected his offer. Angrily, the Moon King transforms into a really huge monster, and attacks Kubo with full force. But no matter how hard Kubo tried in the fight, he was no match for the Moon King. Suddenly, Kubo picks up his guitar, and stings it with the strands of his parents' hair, using magic mighty enough, to summon the spirits of all those villagers who has died. And their force was extremely powerful enough to hold the Moon King back. The spirits cleanses the Moon King, and he was brought back to normal. He is now an ordinary man, who doesn't even remember how he got to Kubo's village. The Moon King is Kubo's grandfather. Kubo tells his grandfather that he is a good man, loved by all the villagers in the town. Immediately, Kubo joins the villagers in setting up the lanterns and they all started to honor their loved ones. 
Kubo parent suddenly appears in front of him, and promises to be will with him wherever he goes, to protect him from harm. Thank you for watching guys. If you love animation movies, please subscribe to this channel. And keep watching. Bye.